Drum Technique Podcast. Hello and welcome to this first episode of the Drum Technique Podcast. Before we start off, I want to tell you what you can expect from this podcast and how it's supposed to have a positive effect on your own drumming as well. This podcast focuses on technique. By that I mean that I only invite drummers who I think have number one, outstanding skills when it comes to either their hand or their foot technique, or both if possible. And number two, I only invite drummers who are able and willing to share some of their knowledge and best practices. In this first episode, I've invited Eric Morotti, drummer of Suffocation, and I have to tell you, he was the perfect choice for this first episode. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, you are going to learn how Eric developed his foot technique, and how he modifies his bass drum pedals to play such tight and powerful double bass as end result. And we are also going to talk about his hand technique, his weapon of choice when it comes to drumsticks, and he's also going to share his thoughts and advice for every young aspiring drummer out there who wants to become a touring musician. All right, that's it for this short introduction. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of the Drum Technique Podcast. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment underneath. And also feel free to contact me if you want a specific drummer to be the next participant on the Drum Technique Podcast. At what age did you start playing drums and did you start to play metal right away? Um, I was like five and I started playing Ozzy and Iron Maiden and Deep Purple with my dad. And then, you know, metal. <laughs> I was like five though, I guess. Okay. Or maybe four, but I was never really good. There was always just drums in the house and I was just kind of like, you know, they're fun. Uh -huh. Living in the country. Uh, <laughs> Might as well do something. To do? Okay. So it was not like, okay, you started out with pop, funk, jazz or whatever. You started with rock and metal. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that answers question number Old one. Old school rock yeah. and roll. Perfect. Thank you for that one. Question number two. Which double bass pedal would you recommend for someone who is just starting out? Iron That's Cobra. Yeah? Yeah. Iron Why? Cobra. Because it's going to strengthen everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you know, it sucks when you're just like, I'm going to learn, I'm going to get a double bass and then instantly just get access and think you're going to go. You got to start off with the big Heavy pedals. feel? Yeah, okay. heavy feel. So you wouldn't recommend to start with an Axis or a Trick or whatever? No, I wouldn't. Right I wouldn't say that. Okay. I think what about you when you started out? What was your first baseball pedal? Uh, it was a like a pearl one, like the super old one, okay. where like one beater was like straight and then the second one curved in, you know? Really? Yeah, uh, it was like this far apart and the beater were like this. My dad picked it up at a music store for like a hundred bucks when I was probably, I don't know, an age, a number. Okay. <laughs> and then I got Iron Cobras for Christmas and I had them okay, for so long with the big old bulky gray case, you know, yeah, that yeah, you can yeah, never yeah. figure out how to close. <laughs> but when did you switch to Pearl Eliminators? Um, I don't remember. 2004, five, okay. maybe. Okay, also like 10 years ago? Yeah. More than 10 years ago. I, I had Axis pedals for a long time and they gave me too many problems live. Okay. Beaters flying okay. out, everything was stripped. So I got to the point where I said, I want to trade these in for those. That's and the guy was like, sure, okay. swap. And now <laughs> never, I've, I seriously think that pedal, the one over there is the first oh, one. You don't see it right now? You mean the Iron Cobra? No, no, the one that, I, the, the Pearl, that's the okay. actual one I had from like that long ago. Okay, perfect. Um, for the audience, you're gonna see the pedal in action in a couple of minutes. So no worries. Okay, perfect. Question number three. What sticks do you use and do you prefer lighter or heavier sticks in general? Los Cabos. Yeah. Heavier. Los Cabos. He's rock size, you know, 2B but a bit longer. Okay. That's good. That's it. That's it. Number four. Hand technique and blast beats. What did you practice when you first started out? And, important, did you focus on rudiments alone? Or did you just start to practice like single strokes? Okay, this is my blast beat, right, left, right, left. And that's uh, what I just kind of, I didn't really think, I didn't really overthink it. I just like monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> I saw a video or I saw a local band when I was like young in like the churches at, in Kempville. And I saw some guy doing a blast beat and I was like, okay. I didn't like sit down and write it out and map it all. I just went, mm -hmm. oh, it looks like this. He's walking like a duck. <laughs> and then he's doing okay. this. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Question number five to Mr. Devban, Eric Morotti. Bass drum triggers. What kind of bass drum trigger are you using and what kind of drum module? 
Are you using right now and why? Roland. Roland RK10, the old plastic ones. Mm -hmm. I've had the same ones for about 12 years. Yeah. And I got the Roland TM2. The TM2, that's See? it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, it's pretty small. Well, I have uh, also the SPDS for mm -hmm. samples and stuff, but for the triggers, TM2, right into it. Got the kick drum sample from the album mm -hmm. thrown on there, and that's it. Okay. So now the obvious question bass drum, head tension? Tight like a snare. Uh, really tight. Tight like a snare. I want to <laughs> see the lungs going <laughs> breaking out and stuffed full as you can okay, with pillows. Okay, stuffed full with pillows? Yeah, well, I mean, any material oh, that would densely okay. clear the space. <laughs> okay. You don't okay. need a pillow. Hand and foot technique. So. Let's start with double bass and foot technique. You are using the heel toe technique. Doubles, so, yeah. Question. You're using the heel toe technique. How did you start practicing that technique? And who inspired you to start practicing heel toe? Uh, I just started. I just started it because I just started picturing when I would heard, hear songs. Mm -hmm. I would picture them going like this. And then I remember seeing a sick drummer video of John Longstreth a long time ago yeah and i saw it and i was like exactly that's it that's it right there and i had seen people doing like heel toe like physical like full motion yeah but never like the back and the doubles when you're mm -hmm. clenching your toes in and <laughs> slamming down as a heel toe player is there a big difference between okay my foot is resting on the footboard like my heel and the front of my, my, my i rest my toes on it all the time yeah. And the ball of your foot is like just stomp. Behind. If you want to do a single, you just do this, and if you want to do a double, you stomp mm -hmm. with the beater up against the skin, yeah. and then when you stomp, it does, and then you do another one on the control, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So it's pretty much, if you're gonna start going into doubles, it's resting, and then the first note is on the back. Okay. Yeah. I got that one, but next question. <laughs> <laughs> when you. When you switch from regular singles, let's say you're playing a blast beat, your feet are like accompanying the right hand, right left, right, right foot, left foot, left hand, mm -hmm. um, and then you head into a double bass part. Do you think about, okay, now I got to use the heel toe, is there like any big change or is it just, okay, now I'm gonna stomp? Uh, no, I mean, it's instinct, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. How do you choose, what, what's your brain doing when you decide you wanna start jogging from walking? You kind of just instinctively knack on it. It's like muscle memory, subconscious movements. Okay, but it's not like you're, you're not thinking about, okay, now since the heel toe part is about to start, I have to like change foot position. Uh, no, when I was, when I was okay, learning it, I, I would, I would always, like, always be like, okay, here we go. I have to make sure I'm placed in the right spot. Now it's more like I know where it is. I, okay. I tend to do this with my toes. So okay. if it's singles. Can you show that in the camera? Yeah. Like this. Picture yeah, like okay. a cat, a cat climbing I'm up really the stairs like this. Like this. A cat doing this okay. up the stairs. Yeah. So like you're doing singles, doubles, doubles. Really? Okay. Yeah. The toes. Push them in. See, that's like really interesting because that's the stuff that you don't see even when I watch a video of you play. Yep. I never saw that. Kind it of makes thing. an arch because like your toes do this, and then your heel, and then in the middle there's this gap, which mm -hmm. makes okay. like it makes it easier. I don't know how it just does. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. It's a little secret. I cut a drumstick about this much and I tape it and glue it to the heel plate of the pedal so that it creates a little rim for your foot so you can do a gravity with your foot. Isn't that cool? It's just a little, little, little stick there. It's a little cool trick. But it really works because then you can just press on the back. Instead of doing the full motion like this, you just... And it does the double. Drop it, keep it on. Next question. At what tempo do you switch from regular singles to doubles with your feet? Uh, anywhere between 150 160. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just talking about this in the car, that's why. We've already talked about this. 
Because I wanted to know that stuff. Okay? 150, 160, you know. Once it starts, actually, it depends. Like I said, on the adrenaline on the live show and mm-hmm. how you're doing. I normally would try and keep them as fast as I can possibly go, mm-hmm. or like where it's comfortable. And then when the doubles come in, it's kind of coming. <laughs> okay. Right now, with suffocation, is there a song in the set? Let's say a tempo of 200, 220 BPM. Where you play like okay, eighth notes, right, left, right, left, regular heel up, double bass. Then when you switch to sixteenth notes, sixteenth note triplets. Um, then you start using the heel toe technique and with 30 second notes. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that was wrong. You're switching from regular eighth notes to eighth note triplets to sixteenth Yes, I do it. I do it. I do this exact thing in uh, Liege, Liege of Inverosity. You know that song? Mm-hmm. When it has the slam and it goes dun 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 dun. dun. And then I go yeah. doubles dun 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 okay. dun dun. So <laughs> instead of okay. just going, <laughs> you know, okay. switching into the triplet. Okay, that's it. Yeah. We got that. Hell yeah. So, next question. Is there any change in your heat toe technique once you play faster than 220 beats per minute in comparison to slower tempos? Slower tempos like 160 to 200. Mm, Regular 16. Nope. It's all hips and knees that change. The feet are always the same. Okay, that stays the same. It's all the same, yeah. Okay, good. So actually, you know, uh, you feel actually, and that's like mostly muscle memory. Okay, you know, okay, that's 180. Mm -hmm. 16 should sound like... Yep, Uh, oh yeah. you're able to adapt without even thinking about it anymore. Yeah, it's all by feeling, you know, it's all by feeling. (laughs) Perfect. Pedal settings. Any recommendations for anyone who wants to start using heel toe with a chain driven pedal? Yeah, just keep it tight. Make it as tight as it can go. Mm -hmm. And I mean... (laughs) Okay. That's about it, but man. You can do double strokes. Like I do it on any pedal. It doesn't matter what the pedal is, as long That's as you have important. enough. Yeah. As long as you have a nice, nice tension on the spring for mm-hmm. it to bounce back and give you that yeah. second whip. You can do it on Iron Cobra, Speed Cobras, Axis, of course, Pearl Eliminator like mine. But that's always that's important. That's important for everyone who's listening to that stuff because yeah. a lot of drummers they got the Iron Cobra or the Pearl Eliminator, but they feel like okay. Once I get axis pedals, for example, then I'm gonna be able to play too. No, but that's not the case. No, it's not. Yeah. That's that's the mystery complex, you know, when you just mm-hmm. feel like this gear will make it better mm-hmm. because in the video I'm trying to monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. He's doing <laughs> that, and it doesn't look the same when I look down. So yeah, but it's, it's just, it doesn't matter. You should be able. Your body's your body. You play on this, play on that. You can play. Mm-hmm. It's like what R- Richie Blackmore always said yeah. when people would show off. Oh, look at my new guitar, new guitar. He'd be like, "See these? I'll play <laughs> better than you on yeah. any guitar." <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Great. Did you ever practice inverted doubles as well? No. Oh, okay. Mark, that Mark, shit is Mark. why. If it's yeah, not yeah, broken, yeah. don't fix it. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm just asking. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. But, it's because it's hard, <laughs> inverted. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But have you seen like Virgil Lunati playing inverted double strokes and it sounds amazing? Yeah, but have you ever seen like the spaceship that that guy flew in on? And not, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> that, guy is, that guy is from outer space. The Zeta okay, reticuli yeah. spawned him of gold. <laughs> you know? Okay, yeah, he's the man. I know. But the question is like, I wanted to ask you the following. You know, when someone's starting out playing double strokes, um, a lot of them like, spend a lot of time at a lower tempo, like let's say 80 BPM, and just start practicing regular doubles versus inverted doubles versus regular doubles left foot leading and then inverted doubles left foot right. leading. So you never did that? No. Uh, okay. What I did do is like, you know, uh, when you like, I did it. I do it or stuff like that. Yeah, or do like triplets, so it's like just to keep it because when you think of it, the doubles are just like doing rudiments on the snare. Like when you're doing like and a double here, so it's the same with your your feet. Mm-hmm. You just took it, took it, took it, took it, like you can do just like the same mm-hmm. rolls, but on your feet, and that's mm-hmm. simple rudiment books. I'm sure you can get. Yeah. Just read them, but do it on your feet and hands together. Match yeah. it, and then at, once you get that control of flipping it on and off at any second, yeah. then everything else is just so natural. Okay, perfect. Good advice. Hell yeah. Perfect. 
All right, hand technique. We talked about this topic before, before this interview. Um, one thing that's like really impressive is this: when Eric is playing a regular blast beat, he got a lot of power. But when he switches to a tom feel, it sounds like okay, he still got the same power, if not more. So how did you practice that? How did you practice that? <laughs> is it like a lot of wrist motion involved? What wrist, about wrist and fingers, control? molar, yeah. all of this, mm -hmm. and just brute power. <laughs> just yeah, okay. go for it at the end of the day. No matter what you want to research, you just got to do it. Like hit okay. hard, you know? Okay. That's kind of it. Molar technique with fingers. I, f I tend, when I'm doing the blast, I'll kind of, like I said, switch from the wrist to the fingers, keep it all together. Yeah. But on Tom Phil's, it's all wrist. It's all wrist. And, okay. and arms. Like you, a figure like this is the motion, and you yeah. move this wherever you're hitting the top. Okay, yeah, if you're going like this, this, you just do the same thing, but you move your shoulders and upper body. Okay. Same power. Perfect. Yeah. Instead of going like. <laughs> you just go like, bah, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's the thing, a lot of drummers really have a hard time, like, when they're playing a regular blast beat, it's like, regular single strokes, then you got the, the typical tone feel, yeah. um, it's still regular single strokes, but like, it turns into, the, it, yeah, it turns into mud, I don't the, know, the, the like, too much hard, molar, when you have too much, it's hard, so, yeah. yeah, so like, okay, a lot of wrist motion, and this is like, German grip, like yeah, I like this. Uh, on the tom fills, I, I tend to be on top. Okay. Yeah, that and then cool. blasting, a little open sometimes, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever works. Last part of this interview. Eric Marotti and his advice for young drummers who are just starting out. Question number one. Wait, <laughs> just a second. <laughs> for everyone who wants to become a touring musician, what advice would you give to a young drummer who wants to become a touring musician? By that I mean, at what what topics, which topics should you focus on to get where you, where you are right now? Like um, you, before you start off, you're just 20 sticks yeah. and you told me that you have been on tour like for almost 10 years now. Yeah. So please answer that question. I mean, at the end of the day, music is music. It's an instrument. We're just characters portraying the way we want to live. I'd say learn how to take crap from people. Grow <laughs> thick skin. Yeah. Get Help your friends out. When people yell at you, bite your teeth, be patient. Because at the end of the day, it's drums, it's music. It's a one fraction of the day we live. Yeah. If you're going to do it for a job, just make sure you can handle a lot of stuff. Because mm -hmm. things are not going to go as planned. And touring is more travel than on stage and more of this. So don't focus too much on the nitpicking. Because at the end of the day, there's maybe six, seven drummers in the whole world that play this type of music actually tight. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is just, eh, I want a gung ho and you get to the catering and drink beer and Instagram story. Look at my life. <laughs> it's yeah. stupid. Just learn how to be a good person. Sense of humor is always good. Thick mm -hmm. skin. Don't yeah. be a baby. Don't get dramatic. Don't be emotional. Just do what you want to do and have fun. You know, at the end of the day, that's all it is. Don't strive to be perfect or anything like that. Because I even think I'm not perfect. I think I have a lot of imperfections on mm -hmm. the drums. You do as well. Like we, but we only know that. And if we focus on that, we're never going to ever accomplish what we really want to do true so i'd say just toughen up <laughs> toughen up <laughs> toughen yeah. up and just do it perfect all right last question what would you do different drum wise if you were able to rewind the clock for let's say 10 years so 20, 16 year old eric would you do everything just the same way you did it or would you do something different i don't know I don't think so because I'm still doing all the same stuff I did 10 years ago. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I started touring 10 years ago, so I already was up on, and I was playing like the stuff in the other band I said, Calitoris. And that stuff is, is absurd. I'll show you it after. It's so fast. So I, and I thought, that, I thought that when I heard albums, you have to sound like that live. Mm -hmm. And then I started touring more and more. And I'm like, nobody. Everybody's <laughs> lying, dude. Everybody's <laughs> lying. And then they go, oh, well, you're cheating. You're using double strokes. Dude. You sound like a shoe in a dryer. Like, come <laughs> on, man. Like, you know, like. And to use triggers as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, use man. triggers as uh, to Terrence Hobbs. How can you like this guy with the man bun? <laughs> Jesus Christ. How mean was your uncle to you? <laughs> okay, perfect. That's it. That's it for this interview. Last words to our audience from Eric Morotti, drama of Suffocation. Um, smoke weed, eat meat, send it. Um,. Martin's the man, and he's crazy. If you get lessons from him, you're smart because he's really good, and he knows what he's doing. <laughs> All right, that's it for this first episode of the Drum Technique Podcast. 
The thing that was the most exciting for me was that Eric modified his bass drum pedals to be able to play that fast with his Pearl Eliminator pedals. I've already got a couple of drummers in mind who I want to invite to be a part of this, so I hope to record episode 2 of the Drum Technique podcast pretty soon. I'm also going to improve some of my studio equipment until next time, so the audio quality and studio setup will be way better as well. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to comment below if you want a certain drummer to be a part of this Drum Technique podcast. Until next time, cheers from Vienna. Bye.